All right, in this video, we are doing a full comprehensive example on project crashing. So in the last video, uh, you'll, you learned what project crashing is and how to do it. This video, we will be actually going through this example and, and working our way through it and seeing what this is all about. So first of all, we need to draw our PDM network diagram for this project. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we can first do our forward pass, and then we can do our backwards pass, and then we can go and we can write all of our total floats on the top here. So we'll have 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, right? Just subtracting these two numbers from each other. All right, so the next thing that we want to do then is we can just fill out all of our information here for the on the table for initial. So our normal duration, you can see we'd have 2, 5, 7, 6, etc. We had our crash duration, we'd have 2, 4, 4, etc. The cost per day, we would be using, we would be considering the additional cost per day to crash, and then the total floats, TF here, we're going to read right off this table. Then for the rest of the information here, this cost and savings is per iteration. So at the beginning, initial, we, uh, we're not going to put anything there. Uh, we can figure out the initial project cost, though. So the initial project cost is the cost of all of the activities added together, including also the overhead cost of the per day times the number of days. So first of all, if you add up all of these, the normal costs, you will find a number that is a, uh, the number is actually $8,100. If you have this, if you have $600 per day times our project duration, which is 18 days, so 600 times 18, we're going to get a value there, which is 10000 800. Okay, so if you add 10,800 plus 8,100, let's even write that, we'll have 10,800 plus 8,100. That number that you get is $18,900. And that is your initial total project cost without crashing or anything. That's like what you would normally expect to pay for this. So project cost, we'll write that down here. We'll have 18,000 nine hundred and our initial project duration before we crash will be 18 days right or early finish late finish there is 18 so we'll go ahead and write that there all right so let's go ahead and let's do this let's do our first project crashing run so what we need to do if you remember from the last video we find we identify the critical path so we have a b d e then what we want to do is we want to find the activity that has the uh, it's the cheapest to crash and we want to crash it and then reassess so we'll do this one day at a time so let's look at this. Well, activity A, we can't crash it because it's already reached its crash duration. Activity B, D, and E are left over. So B would be 600, D would be 700, and E would be 500. So the cheapest thing that we can do right now is crash activity E by one day. So that would cost us $500 to crash uh, compared to 700 or 600. So that's the most desirable thing to do. We always want to get the cheapest ones out of the way first. So for that said, uh, we will be crashing activity E by one day. So we are going to find here a day saved will be one from activity E. Uh, we'll put for the duration column here. Uh, we'll update that. So the these guys will all stay the same. So we'll have two, five, six, seven. But we are reducing the normal duration by one uh, to three. And you'll notice we have reached the crash duration. So we can only actually crash activity E once. Anyway, so this will affect our uh, total floats now. So what we have to do is we have to go up to the PDM network diagram and assess what's happening. So we have actually changed the duration from four. We've changed that to three. Now we're going to update all of the values that this is going to change. So if we have 14 plus three now, we'll actually get an early finish of 17, which means our late finish of 17 will also be there. And then we'll have 17 minus three is 14. So we don't need to update that, right? That's already, it still stays the same because we're only changing the duration. We're not changing the start date of activity E. So let's go ahead and let's let's fill out the rest of our information here on a per iteration basis. So our cost to do this, it cost us five hundred dollars to do that. So we're going to write in here, it cost us five hundred, but we did reduce the project duration by one day. So with that said, uh, we have to pay six hundred dollars a day regardless of all of the activities. This is like a management or an equipment rental fee or something like that. It's just part of the question. Uh, so every day we save, we actually save six hundred dollars. So we spent five hundred dollars but we're saving 600 because we're saving one day of that project overhead cost. All right, so then we have 18,900, and what we do is we'll basically add our costs, so we'll add 500, subtract our savings, uh, and then we will find that we're actually gonna end up with a difference. Uh, we've actually saved our whole project $100, so we'll have 18,800 
dollars and then our duration will now be 17 days. So that's our first crash that we've done to this project. The other thing I didn't mention is we also have to check the total float here. Uh, in this case, 17 minus 17, the total float is also still zero. This could change, especially when you have branches um, or if you're doing uh, crashing projects later back in the schedule. So anyways, uh, that checks out, so we actually don't need to change anything. All right, uh, but what we do need to write down, actually, we do need to record all of our total floats here. So we're still getting zero, zero, one, zero, zero, just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do run number two. Um, let's look at this also. So we've already reduced this to three. We can even write that in here if we want, just to keep track of things, or we can cross it out because we've reached our crash duration. We can't crash E anymore, so that's out of the question. Uh, even though it still has a total float of zero, we physically cannot crash it anymore. That's the definition of the crash duration. Uh, so also let's look at activity A. We can't crash activity A, so let's not look at that. So our leftover options for anything that we're going to crash now is only B, C, or D. Right? You can't crash anything if it's already at its crash duration. So with that said, now we have to figure out which one of these is on the, the critical path. So we have B, C, or D. Well, B, C, or D. It's not C because it has a total float of one, so our options to crash, because so if we crashed activity C, uh, the, the project duration actually uh, it won't change, um, and you can, you can easily work through that. Um, anyways, what we need to do is we need to crash B or D because they are on the critical path, and if we change their duration, it will affect the duration of the whole project. So uh, between B or D, it looks like the cheapest one is going to be B, right? We can pay $600 or we can pay $700. So let's pay $600. So we're going to find B. We're going to save one day from it. We're going to cut a day from it. So our durations here will still have two. Uh, we're going to drop our duration down here to four. Uh, and then the rest should all stay the same because we're only saving a day from activity B. So then we'll get, uh, where, where are we, six, seven, and then three. All right, so let's go back to our PDM network diagram and let's update it. And maybe let's just keep using, we'll keep switching out the colors and you might be able to tra keep track of what's going on here a little bit clearer uh, for each iteration that we're doing. So activity B, we're cutting one day. So that's going down to a four. So now we're gonna to have to update everything else, kind of go around, come back, uh, but we were not changing anything before B, right? So two plus four, well, that will now be six. So we're gonna bring that six into both of these positions. And then six plus six, this guy becomes a 12. Uh, six plus seven, this becomes a 13. And then we're gonna to have to bring in, this is now, oops. Uh, now this guy will be a 13, 13 plus three. 16, you see there we've knocked off one day from the duration of the project. Bring that 16 down, 16 minus 3, so we get 13. I usually fast forward this, but uh, you have to, you really have to see what's going on here. So now we're going to bring back that 13 into each of these positions, 13 minus 7, 6, so we'll cross that out. 13 minus 6, 7, so we'll put that in there. Uh, and then we'll pick uh, the winner here. So we'll have, uh, we're gonna bring in the smaller one. So we'll bring in six versus bringing in seven. And then six minus four is two. So we're not actually changing that. Okay, so let's look and we'll double check to see if any of our total floats have changed. So we have six minus six is zero. 13 minus 12, that one is still acceptable. 16 minus 16 is zero. And 13 minus 13 is zero. So those are all still okay. So when we're gonna come back down here and our total floats will actually all remain the same. So we'll still have zero, one, zero, zero zero just like that all right so our cost because we crashed activity b for one day our cost will be 600 our savings will be 600 because we have reduced our project duration by another day hence saving the other 600 dollars per day that we have to pay regardless um, and so if we do that well look at that actually our, our total project cost will stay completely the same uh 18 800 but we have managed to reduce the uh, the the duration of the project again by one day so now we're at 16 days so we'll write in our little 16 down there all right but it looks like we're running out of time so I'm going to split this lesson into two videos you can find the second half of the video right here